tonight, oh okay, God, we bless you one more time. You get the glory out of our lives. We thank you again for being born. Nobody like you, our Savior, who is worthy of all glory and the praise. Hallelujah. Mm, your name is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we bless your holy name. Let me sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, we bless. We do. Wherever you are, give him glory. talking about. Think about how real he is. One more time. Hallelujah. Cause you've been so good to us, Lord. Oh, Lord, we bless your name. We bless your name.
feet of day. Oh Lord, we bless your name. Oh Lord, we bless your name. The goodness of the Lord. Thank you, you've been good to us. Oh Lord, we bless your name. Welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. I appreciate you taking the time to spend your time with us to learn more about the Bible. All of our sessions are interactive. Please stay connected by taking notes and asking questions. I hope you find tonight's session inspiring. Hey guys, this is Pastor Kelly. I need all of my Hope Carriers to do me a huge favor. I need you to go to our YouTube page, Hope Houston Outreach Church. I need you to hit that like button and subscribe now. The more people we got to subscribe, the more we can do. Once again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Go to our YouTube channel, Hope Houston Outreach Church. Hit the like button and subscribe. Hey everyone, just checking in. I hope you're all having a good time. Remember to ask questions if you need clarification on anything that was said. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. I am Pastor Kelly, lead pastor of H2O Church. Welcome everybody to Wednesday Night Bible Study. Um, I thank you for tuning in on tonight. Listen, before we get into Bible study, if you could do me a quick uh, favor and share this onto your Facebook page. If you're watching on YouTube, I need you to hit subscribe. I need you to copy that link and I need you to slide it in somebody's text message or slide it in the DM or paste it somewhere because somebody is going to learn something today that's definitely going to help them. Listen, I am so thankful and so humbled by the opportunity to teach you God's truth. You know, I uh, went to school um, for several years uh, studying the Bible. Um, I, I have a biblical studies degree. And um, one of those, uh, one of the things that I learned as going to school, um, studying the Bible was an appreciation for God's word. You know, so sometimes uh, we grow up in church and, um, we listen to the Sunday school lessons, and uh, we might even uh, hear a few things um, from our pastor and other ministers who might be bringing messages. But it's a whole different, another level when you are in the word for yourself and God's word is really, really ministering to you. And um, when God's word ministers to you, you get what they call a revelation. Uh, the, the word is opened up to you. and uh, the, the the inner workings of God's heart is revealed to you. You have a fresh, you have a, an awakening of the scriptures. And so that's what I like to do for you every time we study is present the scriptures to you in a way to where uh, it awakens something in you to where you want to um, uh, study more of it. So um, we are in um, the third part of our Bible study series um, entitled uh, the principles of giving. And so um, we are in um, the phase of it, which I like to call establishing the truth. So um, today is, if uh, I would title today's lesson, it would be Understanding the Principles of Giving, Establishing the Truth, Part 3. And so we have been um, talking about the tithe um, since last week, I taught you the history of the time, and I've covered some of that, but we're going to get into tonight some more supernatural elements of the tithe, and then we'll go on to other facets of giving. But, um, you know, giving, uh, when, you, we, when we talk about giving, um, giving is uh, more than what's in your pocketbooks. Um, giving goes far beyond what you make or what you take home. And so... Um, whenever I'm talking about giving H2O Church, I ain't just talking about your money. Um, I'm talking about giving back to God, the three T's, your, your time, your talent, and your treasure. But giving back to God can be accomplished several ways. Um, but tonight, um, I want to build upon the truth that we established last Wednesday um, as I lay a historical and spiritual foundation of the tithe the tithe. 
the tie, T-I-T-H-E. Now, I admit for a lot of ministries and Christians uh, that be talking and preaching about this subject, tithe or money, um, it can be uncomfortable um, because we tend to be uh, very possessive with our hard-earned money. And um, we are all aware of many churches and ministries that have manipulated and misused uh, the spiritual principle of giving for their own selfish gain and not for the gain of Christ's kingdom or saving souls. Um, and so I have to admit, as a pastor, giving this topic is not a topic I like to talk about because I know when I talk about it, even though I have to talk about it, um, for some people who have not been taught the proper perspective of uh, God's system for finances and our resources and money, that it might be abrasive. You know, uh, most people grow up talking about we don't talk about politics and we don't talk about money and that stuff at this table. But in God's house, we talk about everything. And so um, what I want to do is I want to get into tonight's uh, Bible study. And uh, before I do that, um, I want to say a quick um, prayer. Brother Lucian, God bless you. God bless you. Dear God, thank you for this opportunity to gather in your name. I thank you right now, God, for your goodness. I thank you for your awesome power, God. I thank you right now, Lord God, that we are going to learn something that's going to revolutionize our thinking and how we approach you, Lord God, and how we approach um, the resources that you give to us. I pray right now, Lord God, that the word that you uploaded into me uh, downloads into them and uh, we use it to take it to the next level. In the name of Jesus, amen. And so the title of today's lesson is The Principles of Giving, Establishing the Truth 3. So if this is the third week I've been trying to establish the truth. And I've been giving you some historical and some spiritual facts or information, truths about this subject. Now, um, um, today we're going to continue our discussion on the tithe. And so um, what you need to understand is um, during this series, I'm going to cover several things. Um, we're going to learn what is giving. Remember the Bible study is the principles of giving. We're going to learn what giving is. We're going to learn the history of giving, why we should give, who we should give to, we're going to talk about the five different types of giving. Today is the first one. We're discussing tithe. And then next week, we'll discuss the next one. Um, and tonight, we're going to talk about the supernatural power of the tithe. And so let's get into, get into that. So what I want to do is I want to go over just a brief recap for those of you who um, might be tuning in for the first time on tonight. Um, I want to uh, give you just a brief recap of some of the stuff we covered. I'm not going to take long. You can go back and watch the last video. They're all um, in chronological order on YouTube. You can go back and watch them. But just to bring you up to speed so you understand where we are today, let's look at uh, a few things. Now, in establishing the truth, I told you several things. The first thing is when we approach the scriptures, uh, from the standpoint of trying to understand the principles of giving, we have to understand that everything comes from God. Everything originates from God. God is the source of all things. We got to understand that, right? And the next thing we have to understand is God supplies all of our needs. So one, God, everything comes from God. Two, God is the one who supplies our needs. Just because you get up and go to work in the morning don't mean that you supply your needs. It's not like that. No, God has put you in a position. God has made it so that you're strong enough and able to go to work. He's provided you with the job. He's provided you with everything, right? And then the next thing we have to understand is when we're talking about the principle of giving, this isn't something, God is not asking us to do something that he does not do himself. Um, that ain't how God is. He's not asking us 
to do something that he's not doing himself. And so we understand that God gave first. God gave first. And what did the Bible says? The Bible says um, in uh, John chapter 3, verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave. This isn't the first thing he gave, but this is the most powerful thing that he gave to us. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And so we understand that God gave first. And the next thing we got to understand is that love should be our motive for giving. And so we see that in the same scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave. See, God gave first and everything that we did, that love, when he gave his love, it was motivated. When he gave, when he gave, it was motivated for love. Love should be your motive for giving. Look what the scripture says. And we went over this last Wednesday. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. In other words, he's saying you can give all you got, including yourself, and if you ain't doing it out of love, it's for nothing. And so we understand that love should be our motive for giving. And we give back to God because we love God. And we understand that God uh, owns everything, that everything comes from God. And we understand that God supplies all of our needs. And so when we obey his commandments, we are showing love to him. Jesus said, Jesus says, um, if you love me, obey my commandments. See? Love should be the motive for giving. Now, let's get into some definitions um, that we've covered so we can get into today's um, Bible study. The first definition is giving. I gave last Sunday at church, I gave this portion of the definition, but it's actually two portions. I'm going to read both of them today. The definition of the word giving is to present voluntarily and without expecting compensation, meaning you giving without expecting to get something back. Giving means to pass or to transfer. It means to give back. It means to return something. It means to restore something that's giving. But we're also going to understand, and this is one of the most powerful aspects of the definition of giving, is giving means to grant or to confer access. And we're going to understand that the Bible teaches that whenever we give, we're granted access. The next definition of giving, and I'm, I'm, I'm going through this fast because I got to get to where we are tonight. Giving, the other definition of giving. Whenever you hear me say giving in this particular Bible study, I'm talking about returning, dedicating, or setting apart a portion of what God supplies to you for the work of his church and ministry or for serving others. Ministry means servant. Minister means servant, right? So when I when we're talking about giving, we're talking about giving back to be utilized for God's purpose. That's giving. So when we give our tithe to the church, we're giving back so it can be utilized for God's purpose. That's why I said on Sunday, I don't believe in giving to churches that are not utilizing it for God's purpose. That's not good ground. When I plant a seed, I want to know that that seed is going to go to work for me. Returning, dedicating, or setting apart a portion of what God supplies to you. God supplies me income. God supplies me health and strength, right? So income is my treasure. Health and strength is my time. I'm able to give back my talent for the work of his ministry and for serving others. Last, um, last um, Wednesday, I gave the definition of the tithe. Good evening, hope car carriers and hope givers. <laughs> I gave the definition of the tithe. And I shared with you that the tithe is just, it's not a, it's not a spiritual um, word. 
it's a numeric word. It's a word that that's it's for numbers. A tithe is basically a tenth of something. One tenth. That's a tithe. A tithe is not a spiritual word. You better pay your tithe. No, that's not, that's that's no. So a tithe is a tenth. A tenth, a tenth part of something paid as a voluntary contribution, especially for the support of a religious establishment. So that's a tithe. Every religious um, organization or denomination, um, they are supported by voluntary um, tithes or gifts from their parishioners or from their members. Uh, and God commands us to do so for a reason, and we're going to learn that. Now, what is a tithe? A tithe is one-tenth, okay? So I, I, I created this so you can get a visual understanding of what the tithe is. Now, these X's represent all of your resources, all of the stuff, all of your money. Say say you, all of this represents your, your income. God has supplied it. God says, I want you to set aside one tenth for the church, for the priest and for the community, for those who, who need it most, for the least, for the poor, for the widows, for the shut-in. He says, I want you to set aside one tenth of that and you keep the other nine. So just set aside that one tenth and you keep the other nine, okay? And we're going to get into why he does that. Now, last Wednesday, I gave you a brief history of the tithe. I'm not going to get into it because that'll take most of the Bible study. But in order for you to understand where we are this week, you have to understand this, okay? The history of the tithe. Last Wednesday, I taught you about the War of the Four Kings. And I told you that it was after the War of the Four Kings that the, we hear or we read in the Bible, the first instance when a tenth or a tithe was given. The Bible says that Lot, Abraham's nephew, was captured in Sodom and Gomorrah by some kings. And the king of Sodom and Gomorrah could not get him, get, he couldn't fight him off. So somebody ran and got Abraham and Abraham went and saved his nephew. And as a byproduct, he defeated the other kings, right? And the Bible says that there was a king of Salem, or they say a king of Jerusalem named Melchizedek who blessed him and he gave a tithe to him. Look what the scripture says in Genesis chapter 14, verse 18. It says, then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. What we do every second Sunday, we eat bread and wine. We take communion. He was priest of the God most high, and he blessed Abraham, saying, and he blessed Abraham, saying, blessed be Abraham by God most high, creator of heaven and earth creator in heaven and earth. And praise be the God most high who delivered your enemies into your hand. And then guess what happened? After the man of God blessed Abraham, the Bible says, then Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. He gave him a tenth of his income. When he went and destroyed the four kings, he got spoils of war. He received everything, winner takes everything, and he donated a tenth of it to the man of God for blessing him. This is the first instance in the Bible when we see a tenth or a tithe is paid, okay? The next time we hear about it is Abraham's grandson. Abraham had a grandson named Jacob. God changed his name to Israel. Y'all heard that story in the Bible. This man, he wrestled with God. He wrestled with him all day and night. And God changed his name because he wrestled with him. And he wouldn't let God go. God blessed him and changed his name from Jacob to Israel. And Israel had 12 sons. And those 12 sons became the 12 tribes of Israel. And those 12 sons... Um, 
were given portions of the promised land. He, so he said, when you guys move into the promised land, here is all of y'all inheritance. But he had two sons who he did not leave an inheritance. And the reason why he did not leave an inheritance to is because, and I told you the story, I'm not going to get into it. He had a daughter named Dinah, their little sister. She was, uh, they were in a foreign land and she was assaulted by the prince of that land. And the two sons orchestrated a plot which caused them to go in and slaughter all of the men in that city for assaulting their sister. And because they did that, because the father was working out a deal with the king for, you know, to work out, you know, payment for what happened, they took it upon themselves to do it. And he said, Levi, you will not get an inheritance. Your and you will not get an inheritance of land. Your people will become the priest, and you shall live off of the tithe. And the tithe, um, it was designed to take care of the priest and the community. Now, moving on up. So the next time we speak about, we we see about the tithe is when Moses comes into the game and, and God mandates tithing as a commandment. He makes it a part of the law. Before then, they was doing it to show their gratitude. They was showing their thankfulness to God by giving um, voluntarily. Now, God told Moses, you need to make it a part of the law. So, um, so these are the things that we cover. Tithing became a commandment under Moses. The tithe was for the priest, the, uh, the Levites, because their job was to pray and take care of the people. And the tithe was also used for the community, the people who were poor, the widows, uh, the orphans. So they used the tithe to take care of the priests and the rest of the community. Number three, the tithe represented worship and thankfulness. It represented worship and thankfulness. So like I said at Church Sunday, I said uh, tithing is an act of worship, which makes it an act of faith, right? Number four, the tithe reveals the condition of your heart, of our heart. We talked about that last Wednesday. You're going to hear me saying it all throughout, how giving reveals the condition of our heart. We learned that tithe, the tithe is one-tenth of the harvest or is one-tenth of what you got coming in. So back then they were farmers. And so they were farmers and they dealt with a barter system. They dealt with cattle and all different types of things. So their income looked like that. So a farmer would reap a harvest and he would give one-tenth of that to the priest and the community or to the priest and the priest will make sure it's given to the community. And what we're going to talk about tonight, and this is what I want you to write down in your hope pass. Number six, this is what we're getting ready to go over tonight. This is going to cover the rest of the Bible study for tonight. The tithe supernaturally protects the rest of your resources. The tithe supernaturally protects the rest of your resources. Now, um, before I move on, I want to make sure that everybody can hear me. Lady K, good teaching. Um, somebody who's watching on um, YouTube, uh, Brother Smith, I know you're probably watching on YouTube. Uh, could you let me know if you can hear me just fine? Uh, we're having some technical difficulties with the... Um, with the internet and sound. And so I need to know you guys can hear me before I move on because um, this teaching from this standpoint on is getting ready to uh, bless you. It's getting ready to bless you. Um, so I need y'all to let me know if y'all can hear me um, just fine. So, um, 
Let's get into it. Let's get into today's study. So today's study um, is going to be based off of Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 11. All right, you can hear. God bless you. God bless you. Um, if it's looking a little grainy on your screen, please bear with me long as you can hear the word. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So as long as you can hear the word of God, we good. That's all that matters to me. Okay, so Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 11, when people want to teach about tithing and giving, this is like the go-to scripture um, that a lot of preachers and pastors want to talk about because it speaks the most plainly uh, about tithe. But I don't want to focus on the easy part. I want to focus on the part that's not mentioned as much. Um, and so let's get into that. Let's read um, today's uh, scriptures. Today's scriptures read, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough for you to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines and your fields will not drop their fruit before it's ripe, says the Lord Almighty. My God, that's Malachi chapter three, verse 10 through 11. <clears throat> the first thing I want you to write in your hope pass, and I need somebody to write this, to write this in the comments. The first thing I need you to write in the comments is this. God promises to bless tithers. God promises to bless tithers. God promises to bless tithers. Let's put that in the comments. All righty. All righty. Let's put that in the comments. God promises to bless tithers. Look at the first scripture. Look what the first scripture says. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Look what the scripture says here. Look what it says here. Let's break this down. Basically, what he's saying is God says that when, when we tithe, it unlocks something in the spiritual realm that enables God to start taking action on our behalf. And so the first thing that happens is that um, God is able to open up the windows of heaven and to, be, and to begin to pour additional financial blessings into our lives if we're willing to receive it. But when we tie to our local church, we allow God to supercharge his blessing over our finances and it enables him to bring increase to our finances in ways that we would never expect. And so he says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. The whole tithe. What does he mean by the whole tithe? What does he mean by the whole tithe? He's talking about the whole 10%. He's talking about the whole 10%. Not, and by uh, Sunday, 
at church, I uh, gave the analogy of uh, we're supposed to give a tenth. We're supposed to give 10%. And uh, instead of giving 10, 10% 10 of what you got coming in, you give two. You know, he says, bring the whole tithe, bring the whole thing, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. What is the storehouse? Well, the temple had a storehouse. And remember, the tithe, the harvest, the grain, the vegetables, um, the animals, all of it was used for the priest because it was the priest that lived there and their job was to do all this stuff and for the community. So he said, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Food in my house. What is this house? The church, the temple, food in his house. Why the, now God is not a, a, he's not a human. He does not need our food. He don't need us to fill his cupboard. No, the food is for the community. It's for the priest. That's the purpose of the tithe. He says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And then he says something very interesting here. He says, test me in this. Test me. God is telling us to test him. He said, test me, prove it. Let me prove it to you. He says, test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough for you to store it. Now, I don't know about you, but this seems like a good deal. If I give God 10% and he pours out so much financial blessings into my life that it actually becomes a problem for me to deal with the increase responsibly. That's a nice problem to have. <laughs> How would you like to have that type of problem? He said, test me. He said, give the tithe. Don't piecemeal it. Give it. If God gives you 500, give 50 to the church, your church, your local church. Give him, give him, give a tenth of it. He says, bring the whole thing into the storehouse, into the temple, that there may be food in the temple, food in his house. He says, test me, test me in this and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven. Now, those floodgates, I want you to, I want you to look at it from the standpoint of um, like, um, um, like, like floodgates, like he's saying, you know, I'm going to bust that thing wide open like the, the gates is shut. He says, I'm going a, I'm to a open it up wide and just let the blessings from heaven to pour out on you. It's not, and it's not just financial blessings. These blessings from heaven are blessings that hit every area of your life. Wholeness, every area, not just finances, but health, relational, spiritual, physical. It hits every, mental, it hits every aspect of your life. Um, and so, um, let's look at that. So he says, open up the floodgates of heaven and I will pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Now, let's get to the nitty gritty now. I wanted to establish that most preachers, when they preach or teach on this, they just preach and teach from this standpoint. This standpoint right here. Oh, if you give your temper set, he's going to open up a flood, get to heaven and bless you. That's true. And most people, when they give, they give from this standpoint. They give to get. Now, that's a biblical principle. We learned that Sunday. The more you give, the more you get. But I also taught you that don't let the giving be your motive for giving. Let your motive for giving be love for God be gratitude for God. Now, he said give. Even if we don't get no blessing, this is a promise. Even if he didn't guarantee that he would bless us for giving, we should give because he said do it anyway. Now, when it comes to the tithe, the tithe is not about blessing. There are other ways of, there are other ways to give that's all focused on giving. When you give a tithe, it's not for a blessing. That's not the purpose of the tithe. The purpose of the tithe is to protect your resources. I need somebody to type that in the comments. Tithing protects your 
resources. See, when you give a tithe, you're blessed as a byproduct of you of you giving. That's like God sweetening up the pot. But the real reason for tithing has nothing to do with the windows of heaven opening up and being poured down upon you. The real purpose of tithing is because tithing protects your resources. My God, I need I need you to I need you to really understand this. Tithing protects your resources. Look what he says. He says, bring in the whole tithe. And after you bring in the whole tithe, I'm going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on you so much that you can even stand it. And because you tithe, I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe. It will not drop its fruit before it is ripe. Now, what does this mean? The King James speaks about the devourer. And basically what that means is like an insect, some type of locust or some type of insect that ate, up, ate away at the crops when they were given. They ate away at the crops. And so as soon as you, soon as your harvest came, you planted the seeds, and as soon as your harvest came up, some type of disease attacked your crops and ate away at your harvest. Tithing protects against that. Now, look at it from this standpoint. Say God blesses you with an increase in your finances. That's a blessing. Anytime you can get an increase in your finances, whether it's on a job, whether you start a business or whatever, that is a blessing. But increasing your finances wouldn't do any good if the increase was being wasted. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I want to repeat that. God increasing your finances is not going to do you any good if your increase is being wasted. You see, fortunately, when we tithe, it also unlocks something in the spiritual realm. So what does it unlock in the spiritual realm? What happens is God steps in and he actively rebukes the devourer or the, pre the pest, like this scripture. The scripture says, I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and vines or your income. I will uh, actively rebuke the devourer on your behalf to keep your finances from being drained off by all sorts of things that's beyond your control. Now, I don't know about you, but I get frustrated at having unexpected bills come up and eat away at my finances. And this is what the devourer looks like in 2022. Back then, in the Old Testament days, the devourer was the pest and the pestilence, the rodents and the pestilence and the disease and the weather and all the different things that hit the crops and, and took a portion of it. And God says that when you tithe, you are protecting that. You put a hedge of protection around your finances. Now, here's the thing. If you don't tithe and the devourer hits your finances, what I want you to understand is it is not God that takes it from takes it away from you. If some unsuspected bills hitting eating your, eating your finances up, if you know the car broke down, I gotta go, I gotta go to this doctor, I gotta do this, this and that, uh pipe burst, AC went out. If it ain't one thing after another, all these things popping up. That's not God doing it to you. God is not punishing you for not giving. That's not how this operates. What it is, is it's the devourer. It's the enemy. It's Satan. The Bible says that Satan is the enemy of our souls. And, and Jesus said that he came to kill, steal, and destroy every area, especially your finances. So if you got the Bible refers to it as the devourer. In other scriptures, it refers to it as the canker worm. There's a little worm that comes up and eats at the root of the, the, the crops and kills them. 
See, the canker worm, the devourer, the pest, the pestilence, all of these unnecessary things eating away at your finances is because you're not tithing. Tithing has very little to do with you getting a financial blessing. If I give this tithe, then God going to bless me. No, the blessing is a result of the tithe, but the real reason for tithing is to protect your finances. Because essentially what you're saying to God is, God, you gave me 100. You gave me 100% of all that I have coming in, of my income. I'm going to, by faith, obey your commandments, and I'm going to take a portion of it, a tenth of it, and set it aside or give it to the church so that the priests and the community can, 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 can be well. And God says, because you've done that, I'm going to make sure that the rest of your money, the 90, is protected. And not only that, I'm going to add to it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Lucian. Tithing protects your resources. Sister Woods, tithing protects your resources. Now, I pray I'm not, um, I pray that I'm not moving too fast. Or I'm not talking too fast. Because we're going to be done here in a minute. But essentially, the tithe, the tithe closes the back door to protect your finances from leaking out in the form of unexpected expenses. That's what the tithe is for. And so um, if, if, uh, if, you, if, if you've gotten an increase, say you've got some type of raise on your job and that raise, you're supposed to see that raise in your check. Like, man, this raise is supposed to make a difference. I went from $10 an hour to $15 an hour. That's a major pay increase that you should, based off of how you live, if you're able to live off the $10 an hour just fine, when you get that $5 pay increase, you should be able to live a lot better. You should be able to save more money, probably pay some things down, do some things with it. Um, but if you're not tithing, you get that pay increase, you get a $5 increase, and it seems like you're still living at that $10 range. And I'm telling you, if that's happening to you, you need to get to a Bible-believing church that's actually doing the work in the community, that's actually good ground and fresh ground, like Hope You Not Reach Church, shameless plug, and you need to start paying your tithes because you need to put a hedge of protection over the rest of your finances. You need to put a hedge of protection over your what you've earned, even your savings account. I've been in situations I haven't always been a tithe. No, 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 no. Before I came into the truth of, even after I came into the truth of tithing, I still didn't tithe like I was supposed to. And it wasn't until I started tithing the right way that I seen, okay, I'm able to keep some money in the bank. Okay, you know, I, I done saved up all of this money for a rainy day, and it seemed like the rainy day is every day because I got to keep tapping into it to pay this, to do this, to do that. And I'm like, man, what's going on, you know? And I realized that I wasn't protecting my money. And so preachers and pastors, even myself, we find it difficult to teach this subject because of people's viewpoint about money. And I shared with you in um, the very beginning of this study that the Bible talks about money more than any other subject in the Bible. The Bible talks about money over 800 times. It talks about love half of that, over 400 times. It talks about faith 300 and some times. And it talks about hope 129 times. So if money was so evil, if money was so bad, if God didn't want you to deal with money, he wouldn't talk about it as much. And it's my job as pastor to talk about it enough to where you feel comfortable and to the point where you start utilizing God's principles for your household, for your finances, for your life. You see, remember, God created us. The United States, your mom and daddy had you, but the United States and its laws and the way we do things, commerce and stuff, it governs us, but that's not the way God intended it to be. God put a system in place.
for his creation. And if we tap into that system, we will be blessed. We will see things protected. We'll see things being poured in and not for our benefit, but just like I taught you um, last Sunday for the benefit of others. You see, God will continue to give to you if you continue to give. Give and you shall receive. Give and you will get. We learned uh, last Sunday, the Bible says, those who give freely gain. My God, why do they gain? Because God sees to it that they gain. God makes sure that their cupboards are not bare because he knows that they're going to give for the people whose cupboards is not bare. That's the whole purpose of ministry. That's the whole purpose of church, for God's children to come together collectively to serve, to minister needs. And as a byproduct, those who we serve, the needs of, they will come over and be saved. And then they will become the, the number who is giving to those who need. And then they will come over and, and, and come. And, and it's just like a circle, just like a big old circle. So um, does anybody have any questions or does anybody um, behind the scene have anything um, they like to add or um, share? Please let me know. Please let me know. Is there anybody um, in the comments uh, on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, wherever you might be watching? Is there anybody who has any questions or any comments about anything that we discussed on tonight? Now, remember, so I don't know if you heard it before, and I'm teaching you. Tithing has very little to do with the blessing. Tithing has everything to do with protecting your resources. The purpose of the tithe is to With that being said, I'm going to uh, end tonight's Bible study uh, before we get too many uh, technical difficulties. Um, I'm going to end tonight's Bible study on this note, um, asking that uh, you reconsider tithing to protect your resources. This is a system. This is something that God placed in the earth for us to adhere to. And so uh, I'll be back. Uh, with some announcements right after these brief messages. A year ago, I joined H2O Church. It's been life-changing and inspirational for me. I have the option to be a part of the outreach program by giving back to those in need. It's an honor to be a part of H2O Church. Hope Houston Outreach Church is sustained by God and the generous gifts of God's people. There are a variety of ways to support this ministry. Every gift, no matter the size, is needed and appreciated. There are five ways to give. Give online at www.givehopehouston.com. Find us on Cash App using the cash tag dollar sign Hope Houston Church. Give via text message by texting the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, to 833-593-0836. Mail your offering to 2918 West Grand Parkway North, Suite 150-137, Katy, Texas 77449. Also, Give via Zelle. Find us using the email address hopehoustonoutreachchurch at gmail.com. Thank you for your seed. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So just to uh, let you know, listen, there's um, always a need. There's always a need in the kingdom of God. And so 
Um, I would be remiss if I didn't use this opportunity to let you know ways that you can give to H2O Church so that we could help provide those needs. Listen, you can't be in the community at all times, but your church can. There are certain people that you can't reach, but your church can. And so if you feel led to give to Hope Houston Outreach Church, um, you can give any dollar amount to the places on your screen. You can give via Cash App, Dollar Sign, Hope Houston Church. Um, Cash App, Dollar Sign, Hope Houston Church. You can also give uh, to our website, www.hopehoustonchurch.com, www.hopehoustonchurch.com. Also, you can text the word GIVE to the number on your screen, 833-593-0836. 833-593-0836. Text that word, give. I also want to uh, remind you that we are in our Just Give series where we're talking about the supernatural power of giving, of giving back, giving of ourselves, giving of our time, our talents, and our treasure. Uh, basically, giving ourselves back over to God for his use. There's a supernatural power in giving. And so we can pick up next Sunday um, with another powerful sermonic um, part of the sermon series, Just Give. So I'm going to invite you guys to tune in Sunday. Um, also, um, I want you to tune in um, next Wednesday for Wednesday night Bible study. Um, and I want you to... Um, be glued in and locked into uh, what we're discussing, which is the principles of giving. Listen, I am uh, Pastor Kelly. I thank each and every one of you on tonight who uh, took the time uh, to give me a few moments of your time to learn more about the Bible. I just wanted to hop on for a quick uh, few minutes. And so I want you to walk away from this lesson, understanding that the tithe has very little to do with getting a blessing from God, but it's a byproduct of tithing. And the tithe has very little to do with the church and make all oh, they just want our money because the church is going to be all right. Remember, the tithe is almost a selfish thing because when you tithe, you put a hedge of protection around your money, around your savings around your resources. So I want to teach you that. And I want to encourage you. If you don't have to pay your tithes here, but if you need to pay your tithes, you need a place to pay your tithes, you can do it here. But you need to find you a Bible-believing church that's actually doing the work and pay your tithes and put a hedge of protection around your finances, your resources. Listen, I am Pastor Kelly. God bless you. Thank you to everybody who tuned in tonight. Uh, hope to talk to you all soon. I'm going to end off with a brief prayer and let you guys get on with your evening. Dear God, thank you once again for this opportunity to gather in your name. I pray, Lord God, that we learn something on today that's going to make us better. I pray right now that those who want to tithe but can't right now for whatever reason, I pray, Lord God, that sometime really, really soon you bless them with something so they can give a tenth of it to your church in the name of Jesus. For you said in your word that if we do it, test you, test you and see if you won't bless us for doing it. And not only that, guarantee a hedge of protection over our finances. I thank you for everybody that's a member of Hope Houston Outreach Church and everybody attached to them. I thank you for everybody who's watching on this live in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm Pastor Kelly. God bless you. Good night. Hi, everyone. I hope tonight's session has been positive. We would love to hear your feedback by leaving us a review on Google. Find us on Google by typing in Hope Houston Outreach Church and let us know your experience. I hope to see you again soon.